Okay, um, in this video we're going to use triple integrals to try to find the volume of this surface here. Um, we've got this paraboloid type surface that curves out like this. And when it hits the x-axis it's at a point where x equals 2 and over here it extends along to the y-axis until y equals 6. So these would just be straight lines going up and then the surface would be curving out like this. And we want to find the volume inside of that surface. And the equation of it is z equals 4 minus x squared. And as we've done in previous videos, we imagine as if we're taking an infinitesimally thin vertical slice out of that surface. Sometimes it can be difficult to draw these if you don't have graph paper to work with. We did the best we could and hopefully we'll, we'll get the point across. And then once we have this supposedly infinitesimal vertical slice, we do what we did before. We construct a cube here. Um, of dimensions dy, dx, dz. And we imagine as if we're adding the volume of all of these cubes starting down here in the xy plane where z is 0 and continuing on up till we hit the top of the surface where z has the value 4 minus x squared. And then that would give us the volume of that column. And then for a slice here, we'd want to add up the volume of all of the columns, starting here at y equals 0, and putting all the columns side by side, and adding up all those volumes, continuing along until we reach the value y equals 6. And that would give us then the volume of this vertical slice, and we would imagine having these infinitesimally thin vertical slices and placing them side by side, starting at x equals 0, and continuing to do that, adding up their volumes as we go along until we reach the point where x equals 2. And then add up the volume of all of those uh, slices, and that would give us the volume inside of the figure. So that's the concept. Um, how do we set up the, uh, the triple integral. When we're beginning here now, we are summing up in the z direction starting at z equals 0 on up to we get to the top of the figure here, our boundary limit for z equals 4 minus x squared. So for our first integral, we have dz z goes from 0 up to 4 minus x squared. And then the next step is, imagine as if we're adding the volume of all of these columns. So now we're summing in the y direction. And we start at y equals 0. And we continue along. To y equals 6, and then that gives us the volume of one of these supposedly infinitesimally thin vertical slices. And we would imagine as if we were placing vertical slices, infinitesimally slim, placing them side by side, starting at x equals 0, continuing and placing them side by side adding up the volumes as we go along until we reach the point where x equals 2. So now we're summing in the x direction. So this would be dx going from x equals 0 to x equals 2. And that would be our triple volume, our triple integral. And to evaluate it, we start once again 
put the innermost integral. We'll take it to the outside here. 0, 4 minus x squared dz. So that's going to be straightforward enough. That's just z going from 0 to 4 minus x squared, or that just equals 4 minus x squared when we apply our limits. So this first integral, when we evaluate the integral and apply the limits, we get just this expression. So we can rewrite this now, replacing this with this expression. So now we're going to have the double integral. This replaces this. 4 minus x squared dy dx. And we go from y equals 0 to y equals 6. x equals 0 to x equals 2. So now we'll reduce to a double integral. And again, start with the innermost integral. We'll take it to the outside. This is y here, and we have the integral 4 minus x squared dy. y goes from 0 to 6. And this might, again, this might seem strange. We're integrating with respect to y, and we've got a, a variable of x squared. But again, at this stage of the game, just treat that like as if it's a constant, and go ahead and integrate. So, this would be 4y minus x squared y. Again, just treating the x squared if it's a, as if it's a constant. y goes from 0 to 6. So, let's see. Substituting 6 for y, that would be 24 minus substituting 6 for y, that would be 6 x squared. So this expression here will replace this integral. So now finally we're left with the single integral, 24 minus 6x squared <coughs> dx and x goes from 0 to 2 so this will equal 24x minus the integral of x squared is 1 third x cubed 1 third times 6 that would be 2 times x cubed and x goes from 0 to 2. So let's see, this will equal, substituting 2 in for x, that would be 48 minus 2 cubed is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. So we have 48 minus 16, or the volume there is 32. So we would say then the volume inside of this two-dimensional figure would be 32 units. So that's it. Again, um, same rules apply. Try to sketch out as best you can um, the type of surface that you're dealing with, what its boundaries are, how you're going to determine the columns and the slices and adding up the slices and then from that you set up your triple integral apply the limits on it as you can determine from the sketch that you have and then start integrating it 
begin with the innermost integral, do the integration, apply the limits, and then just keep applying the process throughout. Um, okay, that's it for the volume integrals. I uh, hope it was helpful. And what we're going to do now, we're going to continue working with multiple integrals. And in the future videos that we're going to post, it will be how to make variable changes in multiple integrals using the concept of Jacobians.